Hey, what's going on? This is Nico with Nico's Wings here. This is my Cirrus SR22 Turbo G6 2018 model. It's an airplane that has a lot of capability, especially for the kind of mission that I fly. As you have seen in some of my recent episodes on YouTube, I can fly this all the way to 25,000 feet. I have anti-ice capability and all sorts of systems on board. However, today we're gonna to be talking about things that may not be as favorable to you as a pilot as you know, I'm not a certified flight instructor, so always check with your flight school and your flight instructor about what I'm saying here, because who knows, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. So double check. Also check your local regulations for the country that you fly in, because you don't know. I may not know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about icing. Icing is a situation where the airframe starts picking up ice in various forms. It can happen in the winter or the summer at any temperature on the ground since the air temperature gets colder with altitude. You can look up at AOPA's website for more information on airframe icing and talk to your local flight school and flight instructor on more details and material you can study for icing awareness and avoidance. My airplane is uh, equipped with a Fiki system which means that I can fly into known icing, meaning I can fly into icing conditions even when I'm aware of the potential for icing. The reason for that is because my Cirrus SR22 Turbo G6 is equipped with a Fiki system which uses a TKS based whipping wing technology. This gives me the capability and permission to fly into known icing conditions. The aircraft is equipped with up to 8 gallons of TKS fluid which is a total of about 75 pounds of liquid and it has a system to measure it and it's exact available time left for me to use plus backup pumps in case of main pump failure. I get a total of about 150 minutes of normal flow rates, 75 minutes at high and at max rate a total of about 37 and a half minutes of anti-ice capability in two minute bursts at a time when the ice accumulation is just very very fast. The TKS fluid is pumped through very tiny laser drilled holes that are almost not visible to the naked eye. The airflow over the wing spreads the fluid back to the point where the entire wing is covered. It also protects the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. The propeller is protected by nozzles that use centrifugal force to spread the TKS fluid on a rubber guide on the leading edge of each of the blades. The windshield is naturally protected by excess fluid leaving the propeller and flying backwards into the windshield but also have dedicated nozzles that can be activated by me in the cockpit. When I know that I will be flying into known icing, I make sure I have plenty of TKS fluid on board. I always have plenty available at the hangar and will refill it as needed. This stuff is not cheap either. Depending on the source, a two and a half gallon container can cost up to 70 bucks. Having too much also in the hangar may not be a good idea since it does expire. I want to say that uh, it smells a bit like uh, alcohol and feels like a thinned out baby oil. Definitely has a slimy consistency. Oxygen. When you fly in the airlines, the cabin is pressurized to an altitude that equals about between six to 8,000 feet. This way passengers can breathe without the need of oxygen, even at very high altitudes above 40,000 feet. My Cirrus SR22 Turbo G6 is not pressurized, so legally when above 12,500 feet for more than 30 minutes, the pilot needs to use supplemental oxygen. And when above 14,000 feet, oxygen is mandatory for the pilot and everyone on board as it is simply dangerous and hypoxia can set in very quickly without ever knowing. Again, talk to your flight school and flight instructor about oxygen use, legal requirements and how to best do that for yourself as lack of oxygen can lead into some very serious issues that can be very dangerous. In my Cirrus, the oxygen is installed in the tail 
and it is available for all five passengers through access uh, portals in the cabin ceiling just behind the front seats. I use oxygen regulators to regulate the oxygen flow to match the altitude and I also make sure that I have plenty of oxygen for everyone on board for the duration of the flight. Below 18,000 feet I use cannulas. Above 18,000 feet I need to use a mask all the way up to the ceiling of the aircraft which is 25,000 feet. By the way, oxygen gets used up very quickly the higher you are and the more passengers you have on board. At 25,000 feet with four people on board, a full tank will run out in under four hours. What I found very interesting when I bought my Cirrus is that there was absolutely no information available on how to refill my oxygen bottle. No information on where to buy oxygen from, what sort of hose to use and how to go about it. So here it is. I asked around and one of my mechanics told me to call a company called Nexair. I found them online and I had to fill out a very long form to establish terms with them. Once they approved me, I ordered my first oxygen tank that delivered to the hangar a few months ago. Then I had to order a hose to use to move the oxygen from the tank to my bottle. Again, absolutely no information on the type of connectors, so I had to order this item in the blind and hope it worked. Uh, with a bit of plumber's tape and a wrench, I connected to the tank and was able to fill up my bottle. And the way it works is that in the baggage compartment, there's a small access panel that is used to refill the oxygen. The bottle needs to be filled very slowly at less than 200 PSI per minute so that uh, the uh, pressure doesn't overheat the bottle and then getting it damaged. Filling it uh, from, let's say, 200 PSI to about 1500 PSI can definitely take several minutes, so you need to be patient. As I'm doing this process, I'm being very, very careful to do it very, very slowly. It's supposed to be less than 200 PSI per minute. Otherwise, I may damage the bottle, which could be very expensive. The key also is the differential between the pressure inside the bottle versus the pressure inside the tank. So that has to be always more pressure than in there. Otherwise, simple laws of physics, pressure is not gonna transfer from here to there. The two tanks have reached equilibrium, meaning that there's no more PSI's that can be pushed into that tank. So I have reached roughly about, what, about 1300 PSI, which is pretty good actually. I like it, it's about two thirds full, right? So it's pretty good. So at this point now, I just uh, close this completely. It's now time to bleed the line because this line is full of uh, oxygen under pressure. Slowly untie it. That's the process. Now it's time to go back home and we're done. My Cirrus is a very capable aircraft that helps me achieve my business missions with relative safety and thus turning the things that want to kill me into opportunities to learn, improve my flying skills and get better at strategy while always applying safety first to any type of flying I do in icing and with oxygen in the flight levels or just a simple VFR flight to go see an employee in Orlando. Thank you for watching and enjoy your day.